In this step, we'll take a look at how you go about setting up for a batch render, which is the process of getting your scene in Maya rendered out to a sequence of frames or video that looks beautiful and sexy. So as with most things in Maya, the first thing you need to do is get the settings right. So where the render settings live is just this icon here. So we'll give that a click and we've just got to get a few things set up. So the first thing that I always change is the image format. Now it starts on Maya if which is a nice image format and there's nothing wrong with it other than the fact that no other application I've found will open the bloody things. So let's make sure that they're in a much friendlier format that things like Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, whatever other applications can work with. So the one I like is Targa.tga. The reason I like it is because I've used it and it hasn't yet given me any problems. That's enough for me. So let's go with Targa. The next thing you need to change is this frame forward splash animation extension. Uh, it's set to name.ext. It's wrong. The reason we know it's wrong is because this little chappy here in brackets says single frame. We need to render out multiple frames. So anything that says single frame probably isn't what we want. So let's click on that and we're going to choose the next one down. Name.hash.extension, which will be rendered out as name.frame number. Dot extension. One thing I would say to you is whichever one of these you choose, make sure that it ends with dot extension. If it doesn't and you're working on a Windows machine, then Windows won't know what to do with those files because it won't know what application opens a dot three two eight file. So make sure that it ends in extension. So I like this one here, name dot number dot extension. This thing here, frame padding, basically means how many zeros to put before the frame number. I've never needed to go above 4 yet, so I just leave that as standard. This bit at this stage is quite important, the frame range. Now you're probably thinking, we've done 200 frames, so what Sheen's going to type in here is start frame 1, end frame 200, and you'd be wrong. Because batch rendering, if you're doing a big project, can take a lot of time. And you might set a batch render up, and go away, leave it for 30 hours, come back, only to realize that you've rendered the wrong camera. I speak from experience. Um, you know, I thought that I could just leave a project rendering, go to the pub, uh, come back slightly inebriated and everything would be finished. And I was wrong because I'd rendered the perspective camera and not the camera that animated. Uh, and I nearly missed the deadline on that one. So it's always a good idea to just do a test render first. So I'm going to leave it from one to 10 just to make sure everything's working properly. The next thing we need to check is that we're rendering the right camera. And here is where I fell foul um, previously. So renderable camera purse. Nope, we want it to be camera one. You could do shot cam if you're particularly fond of that shot, but I'm doing camera one because it's more better. Okay, presets. Um, basically set this to whatever you want. For me, for my purposes, HD 720 is fine, but you can see there are higher ones there. You can go to 1080. There's a 4K preset in here, or you could set it uh, manually by typing your width and height in these boxes. The next thing we need to do is look in the Maya software tab and just make sure that we're happy with everything in here. So if you've been following my modeling tutorial that got you to this stage, then this should already be set up quite nicely. You should have ray tracing turned on. You should be using at least intermediate quality. I'm actually going to up this now to production quality just to make it um, the most beautiful it could be. But I'm also going to go down to motion blur and just put a tick in that box. I'm going to use 2D motion blur and everything else can stay default. And that just adds a little extra realism to the shot as things are moving. The frames won't look too perfect. There'll be a little bit of blur between them and that'll just make things look more believable like they've been shot by a real camera. Once you've done all that, you can click on close and you'll be ready to go for a batch render. In order to do that, we're going to change the menu set again from animation down to rendering. There it is. And the option to batch render lives under render. Before we do this though, I'm going to give you a word of warning. Make sure your project's set properly at this stage. Maya will now, when it starts rendering, start putting images in the images folder of your project. So, just to show you where that is, in my project folder on my desktop, um, there's my images folder. I've already done a test render previously, and that's where they sit. So I'm just going to overwrite those now with you. To make sure that your project is set properly, I can close the hypershade now. Just go to File, 
set project and make sure that it's set to the right place. And mine is. And then we'll go to render and we're going to go to batch render. It will then start rendering with Maya. At this stage, if you really want to see the progress, how it's working, this section of Maya is telling you where it's at. You can also click on this icon here, which opens the script editor. And what this will do is show you the progress. So you can see at the moment, it's rendering frame one and it gives you a percentage of how far it is through frame one. So that's frame one finished. It's now moving on to frame two. I'll give me a percentage of that. There we go. And it'll keep doing that until I've got all 10 frames done. So I will see you once they're complete.